But let's start off. People throw the word cloud around a lot. It's a very jargony term. And what does it actually mean? So the simplest way I could think of to define the cloud is that data is not stored on your computer. So instead of saving a file to your computer, instead of saving a file to your network drive in your organization, if you have a file server, you actually save your files uh, to the internet, it's a very broad term, and they get saved in someone's server somewhere. So for example, Google, an organization like Google that has a lot of tools in the cloud, has some large server uh, servers where they store all of your data, and then you access this through the internet. So often that's through your browser, often with cloud tools you'll be logging into a program in your browser, but sometimes, uh, for example, like Dropbox and TweetDeck, you do actually have to download something, but it's still connecting to the internet to get you your files. So if you're having trouble visualizing what's the difference between a cloud tool uh, and a tool that's not in the cloud, I think the simplest way to think about it is to compare Microsoft Word and Google Documents. So I think everybody's familiar with Microsoft Word or OpenOffice, which is a very similar tool. And as you know, it's, it's a word processor for, uh, for writing documents. Now, the, one of the similar tools in the cloud is called Google Docs. And like you can see here, it's also a word processor. It also allows you to write documents. But because it's in the cloud, it has a few more features that you don't get from, uh, from the typical Microsoft Word version. So I'm quickly going to show you um, what that actually looks like. So what you're seeing right now is actually a live Google document, and this is your further, this is the further reading handout, um, and you should be getting the link for that in the chat if you want to access this as well. So I've, as you can see, this is just a very typical document, but because it's in the cloud, it's actually easy for me to share with other people. So if I go to the sharing settings here, you can see that I've actually made this public on the web, which means that any one of you can go to this document if you have the link and actually make changes to it. So if you have other resources you'd like to share that you found really helpful for learning about the cloud, I do invite you to add those to this document. The other benefit of Google Docs, where you see it's different from Microsoft Word, is that multiple people can actually edit it at the same time. So right now, um, I can make some edits, but my coworkers, so this is me typing here. I'm the presenter and I'm typing in here, but my coworker Jane could actually be at the same time making edits to the same document as, uh, as you see right now. So I'm actually not typing right now, my hands are off the keyboard. And Jane is helping me do my little demo. So because this is in the cloud, this is possible. This wouldn't be possible if we were just um, having a Microsoft Microsoft Word document on my desktop. So basically being in the cloud opens up all these possibilities that weren't options before. Thank you, Jane. Jane has also demonstrated that you can add comments, which is a really helpful feature we find in Cloud Range Together on Google Docs. Um, now, fortunately, Google Docs also has the uh, ability to track revision history uh, and roll back. So I'm just going to get rid of these comments here by rolling back to our previous version which is right here. So I'm going to restore this revision and we're back to normal. So moving along, I wanted to give you a few examples of other common cloud tools that you may be familiar with. A lot of you in your personal lives may be on Gmail or Facebook, and you may also use that as part of your organization. As well, um, Microsoft Office 365 is a great alternative to Google Apps and Google Docs for those of you that are more familiar with, uh, with Microsoft products and it's a more familiar interface for you. Salesforce.com is another one you may have heard of. It's a well-known database or constituent relationship management system that is uh, in the cloud. So most of these applications that I've been talking about so far fall in this first category, what's called software as a service. And I don't want to get too technical, but I do want to point out the distinctions here because there is some value here for nonprofits to understand the different ways in which you can use the cloud. So by far the easiest way is to use software as a service programs, which is basically software that you access through the internet. So Salesforce, uh, Gmail, SurveyMonkey, uh, some of the other ones I mentioned, those are all software as a service. 
applications. You really usually just have to sign up for an account, sign in, and you're good to go. Some of them, like Salesforce, require a little bit more customization. Another type of cloud is the, what's called platform as a service. So this is mostly relevant for those who are doing software development, which is, uh, doesn't apply to most nonprofits, but if you are uh, if this does apply to you, then it's something to look at. For example, you can develop applications for Salesforce on the force.com platform. And third one that I want to highlight, because this, again, is actually quite relevant for not many nonprofits, is the infrastructure as a service. So basically what this is, is it's raw infrastructure in the cloud. So instead of having a server in your own organization and having to maintain it and install the backup, um, you can actually have the same kind of risk in the cloud and not have to actually maintain that physical server yourself. One of the other distinctions about the cloud from typical services is how much it costs or what, what the pricing structure is, put more accurately. So typically what we're used to is say we buy a copy of Microsoft Word, we pay for that license, you basically own that copy of the software now. You can use it indefinitely. So if you want to stay on Microsoft Office 2003 for the rest of your life, uh, you are welcome to do that. Eventually you might not have an operating system to run it on, but licensing-wise there's no problem with you continuing to use that. Then if you do want to upgrade, you would buy a license, say, of Office 2007 or Office 2010. You'd have to, again, pay once up front and you would own that license. In the cloud, things tend to work differently. Typically, you'll pay a monthly basis or sometimes a yearly basis for the service. Um, often, the pricing is structured on a graduated model with a start off version and then having different uh, incrementally, incremental paid versions getting more expensive but then also getting you more features. So one of the things that's this is, first of all, that sometimes you can get stuff for free uh, if you just need the very basic version. And second of all, that it does have the, cap cap have the capacity to grow with you. So if you want to start out with a more basic paid version and then later grow into a more, uh, a more advanced version as you expand or your use of the tool increases. It also allows you to try things out pretty easily because you can often get a free trial version. But it's just a thing to be aware of. If you think of which one's more expensive, well, there's no basic answer to that. It's like the difference between buying a house and renting an apartment. Depending on how long you're going to use a tool, how many people are going to use it, uh, it will affect which one is actually more expensive for you. So I can't give you a straight answer on that. You'll have to actually do the, the cost calculation and figure it out for yourself. If we pay every month for this, is it more expensive in the long run than to pay once at the beginning or, or not? So I hope that gives you an idea of what the cloud is. As I said, usually, thing, usually programs that you access through your browser. And why should we as nonprofits care? Um, this is it's kind of a technical consideration. Why should we care whether we're accessing our program through the browser or on our desktop? Shouldn't we just leave that to the IT guys? And the reason why we should care and the reason why hopefully you're attending this webinar is that, first of all, the cloud actually offers a lot of potential for things that just aren't possible uh, in traditional software. So like the example I gave you with Google Docs, if we just use Microsoft Word, it's never going to be possible for multiple people to edit a document at the same time. It's not going to be as easy as it is to just share documents with each other and always have access to the most updated version. So the cloud opens up more possibilities that, weren't pos that just um, didn't really exist before. Especially for small, for small nonprofits, it also gets you access to services that you just couldn't do before. So, for example, uh, if you as a small nonprofit don't have a server, and you probably shouldn't, then your capabilities are quite limited. But because of the cloud, you can actually get a lot of the same capabilities and capacity that you would have with the server for a much lower cost uh, and much less administration is needed.